Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavoda. I'm an ENFJ and today I'm gonna let you guys know some insights and inspiration and wisdom that I have learned from ESTJs. And I'm going to continue on this series. I'm really exhausted, about to take a nap, but you know, enjoying the outdoors. It's Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to everyone. Uh, even those who you know, have strained relationships with their mother or have lost a mother or anything like that. Um, I hope that you are mothered and loved in your, you know, life today, whether or not that's an actual mother. Um, so I'm going to be continuing on my series where I sort of share um, some insights I've learned. And the ESTJ, this is going to be insights that I've learned from actual ESTJs I know or just some things that I've gleaned about life through observing the ESTJ worldview. Now, as an ENFJ, ESTJs use the complete opposite cognitive functions as I do. And so um, the, the way they view the world is very, very different. And this is different than how I might relate to like an INFP or an ENFP who also uses op like opposite functions. ESTJs are going to also be similarly to me, forcing their worldview sort of onto you because they're EJs. And so for that reason, I've clashed with quite a few ESTJs in my life. But I think that when you clash with someone, that is a huge indicator that they're seeing something that you're not seeing. And it's a huge, um, you know, sign that maybe you should take a pause and think about what your perspective is and think about maybe if there are any gaps in your perspective. What I've realized through observing the ESTJ is that, you know, you can only do what you can do and you can only take one day at a time. And as long as you're really doing all that you could do to improve a situation or to be effective, then there's really no use complaining about it because, you know, you, there's also no use worrying about it because you don't know the future and you know there are so many unknown obstacles that could come up in life and as long as you are like a useful and effective person then that's really like what all you could do they don't seem to think about mindset as much as I do as like an NJ but you know to some extent, you know, I will beat myself up for things not being how I want, but it's like the ESTJs in my life that will remind me that I'm at least doing everything that I could do, you know, like, have you put yourself out there? Are you willing to do the dirty work in order to succeed? Or are you only, are you like only doing what feels fun and comfortable? Um, ESTJs are willing to, you know, take a job that isn't super prestigious in order to, you know, provide for their family. That's a really good example. They don't, it's not about, you know, having fun, you know, you do what you got to do to get the job done. And if you are avoiding like if you aren't doing what you need if you aren't getting the job done whatever that means for you like you aren't providing for yourself you aren't providing for your family or um you know you aren't getting enough sleep you aren't you know making sure that you're taking care of your body and eating healthy if you aren't doing that uh and then you haven't done all of the things that you should be doing to remedy that then you kind of can't complain like there's really no use to complain and all it's doing is uh, negatively impacting everyone else around you because they don't want to really hear you whine because you're kind of just uh, insulting everyone else around you who maybe is a hard worker or maybe has had to make sacrifices in their life. I found that ESTJs tend to really appreciate and respect people that have made sacrifices in their life. And as an ENFJ, my response to that is sort of like, but do I have to make a sacrifice? Do I really have to? And I think that's where there could be some balance here between the two perspectives. Because in a lot of ways, ESTJs, they might just be making sacrifices 
because they think they have to and they're just kind of making it hard on themselves whenever life doesn't have to be all hard work you know you can relax a little bit but it's like I think that an important lesson here no matter what your type is would be what sacrifices are you willing to make and ESTJs they have inferior introverted feeling and so they know what they value and what they love and they're willing to make sacrifices for that and everything else they they aren't necessarily so the sacrifices that they're making is for their family or for their security or you know if they are in public service or if they're in a job where if they are in the medical field and they really care about health or if they really care about you know whatever they're doing then that's what their sacrifices are for if they have to wake up early then so be it if they have to do this or this or that um, they're going to be making a sacrifice and they're going to do hard work um, in order to get there and um, another thing that I've learned from ESTJs is that you shouldn't worry about it until you know all of the details and all of the um, information. If something's just a possibility, then you're wasting your energy if you're worrying about it. You have to think about the energy that you have to give and energy and time is kind of like a limited resource and time is money and so if you are spending time worrying about something that is not even necessarily on the table yet, um, you're quite literally wasting money because time is money. And so if you're worrying about what somebody thinks about you or something like that, um, that's wasting time. And you know, we're all gonna die one day. ESTJs really know this and that's why they care so much about security. And that might sound a little dark and but ESTJs that's why they're kind of somber or serious looking is because they really are focused on what matters to them and you know their family their goals they know that they have limited time like they aren't really someone to just be like YOLO you only live once I'm gonna um, chase the instant gratification they're just like not for the instant gratification. They're definitely thinking about the long term. They're thinking about, you know, I want to only date if it is going to be someone that I'm going to marry and I'm only going to want to, you know, marry someone that I'm going to want to retire with. They're going to be thinking about their whole life. It's like they might they treat their life as if it was a business in a way. We're in a business you can't go spending money on things that are frivolous. You have to think about the long term bottom line. You have to think about where am I placing my energy and where am I investing in what aspects of, you know, your business do you need to invest in? They think about their life in that sort of detached way, but it is serving their introverted feeling that wants, uh, you know, that has deep desires. They want to feel comfortable and they want to be with people that love them and accept them, you know, just like we all do. But ESTJs are really focused on, you know, making that happen and not just talking about making it happen. They really think about their daily day or their daily tasks, their day to day. And they're like, okay, is this actually helping me get where I want to go? And if it's not, then let's not do it, you know? And now ESTJs, since they use introverted sensing and extroverted intuition, and since they don't use introverted thinking, sometimes from my perspective, they could seem a little hypocritical. Now, they are not hypocritical in accordance to their own values, but I realized this as I was just about to say, like ESTJs would probably not be, you know, they probably would be more inclined to like want to eat healthy or like, actually think about the food that they're putting into their body but then I realized that you know I know several ESTJs that are not like that and you know since the common culture and the common practice in the sensory world is to not necessarily eat healthy then you know they might just go with whatever that is but whether it's food or whatever ESTJs are gonna it's like in all in all aspects of their life 
that their FI cares about, they're going to try and take it seriously. So in some aspects of their life, they might not take as seriously because for them it's not serious. And so that's why I guess to me they might seem hypocritical, but okay, that's not really what I'm, I'm not really trying to say like, okay, they're hypocritical. But sometimes it's hard for me because I can tell that they don't use introverted thinking or introverted intuition. And so sometimes their reasonings for doing things seem sort of scattered. But I'm sure that I seem the same way to them as an ENFJ because my SI and FI aren't aligned and so um you know like if something means business to them it means business and if it doesn't mean business then it's not business like one of my uncles who's an ESTJ uh he like works hard and plays hard and I think that that is definitely like an ESTJ thing if you've worked hard then you get to play hard and uh you know he loves entertaining people and having like hosting parties and like cooking for people. ESTJs love supporting people and doing things for people. They're very acts of service types of people. Like I would say if they were to take the love languages test, then many of them probably test as acts of service. Um, not all, but I'm sure many of them do. And so um, a lot of times you might think that ESTJs are super cold and like, not really interested in people, but like they are extroverts. They do, they can be gregarious and friendly and inviting. They just are gonna do it whenever they want to and they're not gonna do it when they don't want to. Like if they're not in a good mood, then they aren't gonna just like fake a smile in any way. But you know, they like providing for people. It's different when you're an FE Dom, when you are an extroverted feeling like an ENFJ or ESFJ, then you're gonna kinda wanna make everyone comfortable and happy and make everything harmonious. But ESTJs and ENTJs, when you're leading with extroverted thinking, then you wanna be useful and efficient for people. You want to do things for them. And that is so different than how FJs are there for you. ENFJs and ESFJs will wanna listen to your problems, you know, will always be available if you call them and you need someone. But an ESTJ is the someone where it's like, hey, like I need help moving, like can I borrow your truck? Or like, um, hey, will you like watch my dog for me? Where they like see that there's a need, they see that, you know, you need them in a way, that there's like a use that needs to be done. And if they care about you, then they're gonna do it. Or at least find a way if they, if they aren't available, then they'll at least like help you find someone, you know, these people aren't cold. Um, like they just show their love by doing things. Um, they, of course, like ESTJs aren't the sorts of people where like just anyone can call them up and ask, Hey, well, like, will you help me move into my apartment? But if they love you, if you're in their inner circle, then like they're gonna drop what they're doing and help you because, and I mean, if you need help, they're gonna like look at the sur like survey the um, the way uh, the scenario and actually see like what your needs are and actually see if they could be of use. And ESTJs know that that's the best way to help people. And a lot of times, FJs, we want to help but we're actually being more of a burden than a help because we're just sort of in the way and ESTJs don't want to be in the way you know like if they could tell like I'm not needed here like I'm leaving like they do not want to be in anyone's hair and I think that ENFJs and ESFJs we want to help too but we could be a little bit pushy and just we almost for our own selfish purposes, want to be seen as a good person and want to be the person that helps, that will be like, I want to help in any way that I can, but we won't have like the extroverted thinking, like the TE to notice that, you know, there really isn't a use here for us. Like we are better suited somewhere else. But TE users, especially, you know, like ESTJs, they know that like if there is a use that they could be if, if they could be useful in a way, then they're going to volunteer themselves to do it. They'll be like, oh, I'll help you carry that or, oh, I'll do this for you. But it's like because they have introverted feeling, they're noticing how the emotions affect people personally. 
They aren't just trying to generally be friendly for friendly's sake. They want to actually move the needle and actually help you if they care about you. And I think that we all can learn from this um, outlook because it's very efficient. It's a very efficient way to love someone and um, it's a very practical way to love someone. Um, because it's not in theory, like it's, it's not, it's not, it's, t it's thinking. So it's practical and it's sensing, which is real. And so it is very real and very useful way of loving someone. Um, and that's what I think is great about ESTJs is, and they also look at people like individuals. They aren't trying to look at people as like a general trend. And also ESTJs, they're able to empathize with you while they disagree with you. And that's a really difficult skill. And although you might not think that when you're talking to one or arguing with them, they are an NFP deep down. And so even though they might seem, I have to go shut the gate, even though they might seem like they um, are like total hard asses or whatever, um, whenever they're arguing with you or if they disagree with you. Um, I'm sorry guys, um, what was I saying? Uh, they actually, um, they actually will like empathize with you and see where you're coming from, but just like agree to disagree anyway. Whereas introverted thinkers a lot of times, especially TPs and even FJs, even though they're seeming nice to you, will be like, in their heads, like, I don't understand what's wrong with this person. They're ridiculous. Like, they're stupid. I, I don't get it. But, like, ESTJs will be like, I know why that person feels that way, but it's not true. They're wrong, but I know why they feel that way. And I'm not saying that ESTJs are always right. Like, they can be incredibly stubborn, and they could be very close-minded. And... Honestly, as an ENFJ, one of the biggest critiques that I have about ESTJs is that they sort of just live life by the way that it, you know, works for them or ha and has worked for them in the long run. But the thing is, is that they're very true to what their truth is. They don't live by anyone else's truth. They live by their truth. And so to me, that can seem very close-minded because why aren't you interested in, you know, understanding how diverse people live their lives and why aren't you trying to incorporate, you know, other people's experiences? But for an ESTJ, they don't necessarily do that because sometimes that can get very muddled and they can very quickly start just not acting like themselves. And they would so much rather just do what has always worked for them and because they know themselves and because they know that that's gonna work for them. And so sometimes they can have struggles like with taking risks or going outside the box, uh, but they're always true to themselves. And they're, I think, afraid to venture out of that because they don't want to not be true to themselves. And, um, but yeah, um, hmm. I forget what I was going to say and where I was going with that. They're true to themselves. Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit exhausted, but I did want to make a video today. Um, they're true to themselves and they're able to empathize with other oh i'm saying that they are not always right they can be very stubborn and they might think that they're right and then not acknowledge the other person's viewpoint but they'll at least be a little empathetic to that i'm not saying that all estjs are empathetic because that's definitely not the case but it's like they're able to like break up in their brain like this person is wrong and then also feel like, oh, okay, but you know, they're a person and I see why they did that. And so I think a lot of ESTJs don't really understand why politics is so divisive today, no matter where they are on the spectrum politically. A lot of ESTJs have no problem having conversations with people that are different. But the thing is, is that they don't really understand like why the FE is always reacting or why people are taking things so personally. And in the process, 
some advice for ESTJs would be, you know, maybe think about what you're saying because maybe you are uh, tone deaf and like hurting people without even knowing. But I guess the, the thing I want to compliment ESTJs on to finish this video with like actually an insight that I've learned from them is like being able to have a level-headed conversation with someone who is different, who thinks differently from you while still respecting that they're a person while also having very strong beliefs and opinions that are different. That's like a really solid life skill and something that I'm not that great at. So, and I'm trying to get better at. So, um, that's definitely some insights that I can learn from them. And I think the last thing that I wanted to say too, is I was talking earlier about how they're very level headed. They sort of realize, you know, where I'm going to die one day, you know, I, I want to fall in love. I want to, um, have security in my life. And then, so they're able to be level headed about the little, little things like, you know, don't cry over spilled milk very ESTJ. They're able to, oh my God, a bee just like hit me in the face. I don't know if you guys got, saw that on camera. Wow. Damn. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, they're able to n like not cry over spilled milk and also they take things into perspective and that's why they're so level headed is because they're taking things as like almost like a bird's eye view of their whole life and realizing that it's gonna have struggle, but that hopefully it will get easier over time and grow more comfortable over time. And they look at it in for the long in the long haul and they take it one day at a time. This is different than how NJs take things, you know, look at things in the long run. NJs are way more vision focused and way more, I wanna end up here, so what do I have to do now to get there? But SJs, they take things one day at a time and they are focused on preserving what they have. A lot of them also are really good at money and ESTJs, like I was saying earlier, time is money. They like will wanna invest in the things and actually practically think about in my life like, okay, if I wanna have a retirement home at, at this age, if I wanna save up for this, like it's almost like they'll take their whole life and then try and budget out like the time and energy needed like for the whole life. That's like really interesting to me. And I think it's because they don't value extroverted sensing where people who use extroverted sensing will sort of be more um, impulsive and focus more on something they want now. And ESTJs don't really have that urge. Um, they will, you know, slow and steady wins the race. They are completely fine with just taking it one day at a time. And they're normally pretty uh, peaceful people and uh, probably won't start any drama with you at all. Um, you know, sometimes I don't like them. You know, people that I know that are ESTJs, sometimes they bug me because uh, they can seem like kind of tone deaf or clueless in kind of creating an impact that they don't notice that they're creating and don't seem curious about creating. But for the most part, in everyday, like day-to-day, interactions with an ESTJ, they're going to be pretty peaceful, pretty drama free, and they're going to be pretty much like treating you like a person, pretty respectful. Um, so that's kind of some insight like to into how they think and maybe you can apply some of that to your worldview. Um, I'm sorry this video, I probably was talking a little bit slower because you know, I'm exhausted and sorry for the weird like bee flying in my face, but if you made it this far, I love you. Thank you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And please join my Facebook group, Personality Typology for Self-Growth. Uh, I'd love to see you in there and chat about, you know, personality type and our differences. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.